Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, hope you're enjoying your day so far today. Um, so this talk is uh, called How to Build Your Platform Around Compassion. And um, I think this is so important to talk about because um, so I run a nonprofit, as you just heard. Um, a lot of people forget about compassion, especially in for-profit businesses. So, um, just like to you know uh, talk about it and um, you know reiterate the fact. So, uh, I do um, run Diverse Gaming Coalition. We fight uh, for a change in online and real-life communities through modern concepts and pop culture. And I started this organization when I was 16 years old. I'm 19 now, and um, I started it. Um, uh, because at that age, I uh, had dropped out and received my GED uh, from high school uh, because of the lack of compassion that um, I was faced in high school um, and bullying and all that factoring in kind of led me to drop out. And when I did that, um, I knew there were there were other people who had felt the same way that I did, that they felt they didn't belong, or they weren't welcome. So I created Diverse Gaming Coalition, and what we do with Diverse Gaming Coalition is um, we create fun and innovative ways to talk to people. Um, so one of these ways um, is our anti-bullying comic book called Life on the Outside, and it follows a non-binary person of color in a high school setting. Uh, so that's just one of the ways that um, we utilize that into our curriculum. Um, and I think it's also um, important for everyone to kind of think about um, you know, creativity in the workplace. So I um, want to talk a little bit about um, facts on bullying. And um, <coughs> so about 58% of kids admit someone has said mean or hurtful things to them online. Over 4 out of 10 says it's happened more than once. But 90% of teens who have seen social media Bullying say they have ignored it. And you see these facts, and they are about teens. Um, and you think, oh, why does this relate to me? Uh, but it does, because um, you, as an adult, um, with your businesses, you all model this behavior. And I think it's so important um, to show compassion in your business to, again, model this good behavior. So when teens see it, they essentially do not want to um, contribute to these statistics. So um, again, no matter what your business is, bullying affects everyone. You see it happen all over the place. Um, and for instance, um, have you ever gone onto a um, social media site? I'm on Facebook a lot. And you just scrolling through your feed, and you see this news article or a post uh, someone makes. Maybe it's controversial, um, and you just go on the comment section, and there's just like very weird and like angry comments on there when there really shouldn't be. Um, so um, when I look through this, like, why do people need to be like posting this? Like, why does? anyone care really so um, when I see this um, it's really important to reiterate the fact everyone that not everything on social media needs to be posted uh, because it really creates a lot of controversy a lot of tension and um, it's really important that you know Facebook is used for a specific purpose and not to be used to you know, stir the pot. So um, social media is a big part of um, our businesses, um, especially with my um, business as a nonprofit. We use social media all the time uh, because that's where our base is on. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about good social media practices um, because when we think about our business in social media, we really don't think about how much that impacts our business, but it really does. Um, so going um, towards like the posts that we put on social media, um, 
big one is you should always respond to comments, even if they're bad ones. And I say that, and if you're on your personal Facebook and you're responding to a comment, it always causes some sort of controversy between you and person that you know, originally posted the comment or some random person that's commenting. But when it's your business, it's a little bit different because it's your business and when, I hope with your business, you're more clear and concise and you're more um, just to the point about things rather than, you know, your own personal opinion with your personal Facebook. So, um, for example, what I post on my personal Facebook in no way um, reflects the, um, the opinions of Diverse Gaming Coalition because that's not how it should be. Um, unless, you know, something about bullying uh, that we're talking about. But otherwise, none of the opinions that I post on my personal social media should reflect my business. Um, so when, you know, you're posting things on your business page and you're, you know, commenting on those posts, think about how the two differentiate. How would I, you know, talk to, or how would someone on Facebook talk to someone through, Facebook or the comment section or posts compared to your business because that's really important and when you're posting on Facebook or you're you know replying to these comments um, you have a more professional tone to it um, and I say respond to comments because um, a lot of most of the time um, you know on Facebook with comments Twitter with replies most of the times <laughs> That's where the most kind of controversy and um, the most controversy happens. So, um, you know, keeping up with that um, is very important because that's where a lot of the tension is, um, especially with, you know, big corporations. Um, again, be clear and concise with your posts. Having something, having bland content, having something that isn't really clear to the audience. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been on social media and I'll see a sponsored post and I like don't understand what it's for at all. So just being, you know, very upfront with your audience, but also um, being aware of who your audience is. Um, keeping your posts diverse, so not just posting about the same thing, making your audience bored, uh, making them just want to unfollow you or unlike you. Um, talking about, you know, the great um, social good your company is doing um, while also talking about the products and services that you offer. Um, a big thing is don't let emotions play part in your posts and that's kind of what I was talking about with um, the comments part of this um, because again there's a fine line between your personal social media and your business um, so when you um, mix the two, it creates a very bad vibe for you, yourself, and your business. So don't think that you need to, you know, say everything or post everything um, through your business's social media because that's not the case at all. You don't want to, you know, lose support, lose followers, lose customers because that's what's most important and that's what keeps your business running and thriving. Um, but while doing this all, stay true to what your company believes in um, because there's a lot of instances where companies where um, they'll you know say, oh, we have this great uh, social good um, thing that we're doing, but um, sometimes they'll do it just to like, um, say that they've done it and to tokenize one thing or not be genuine about it. So when you're doing the social good that you are doing in your company, be very genuine about it. And that goes across the board for everything in your business, whether it is for social good or not, whether it is for compassion or not. Don't do it because you feel like you have to do it. Do it because you want to do it. Um, and do all this while having fun because, um, you know, burnout in your 
in the workplace and um, stress can um, lead to some of these business practices accidentally happening. So do it and you know keep cool, keep your calm, and really um, stay focused to what your message is. Um, now, this is the most important part. So if you um, are working with um, a bigger company, um, there should be a section um, you know, on your company's website or social media that is dedicated to the social good that you are doing. Um, this is really important because it helps customers easily find, you know, oh, okay, they're doing this, they're, you know, donating this money, they're, um, you know, creating these grants, whatever it may be, have a section on your website for that because customers actually look for that and they tend to support more companies that are more open and adamant about that. So we're going to look at a couple examples of um, social good projects that companies are doing. We're going to look at a good example and a bad example. Um, so our good example um, is our Kind Bars. This is a screenshot of their website. Um, if you look on their website, um, there's a lot more to it. If you scroll down, it's actually um, very good. Um, resource to look at. So I suggest going onto their website and looking at it. And what kind bars are, they're granola bars. They sell them in supermarkets all over the country. Um, and you know they're very clear about their message. They have um, what they call their kind movement and they talk about you know um, their message and what they do. And then if you scroll down a little more, if you're on their website right now, um, you can see that they have like their hashtag and um, their um, call to action. And I think they've donated a lot of money too. So they have that very clear on their um, website. And um, you can see at the top, it. Um, on the toolbar, it says, you know, shop about us and then our mission. So um, they have it very clear on their website, and um, it's open for everyone to see. Um, and if you also go on their social media, they post about it a lot too, uh, which is very good. Um, and then our bad example, um, I was at a word camp. Um, talking about this um, in Lancaster at the beginning of the year, and um, someone had made it a thing to bring this up, and I thought it was um, a very good thing to bring up, but our kind of more bad example is um, the um, Kylie Jenner uh, Pepsi commercial, which we probably all know about, um, but this was a bad example for a lot of reasons, but the main reason is that they're trying to use this um, high profile celebrity superstar to promote um, um, no more violence in um, you know protesting settings and it was just a very bad well planned commercial um, the intentions of it were good uh, but when it all played out it was just a mess and it was all over the news and everyone just seemed to hate it so um, the reasoning uh, why this was such a bad commercial is because one, they you know used their this celebrity Kylie Jenner who um, is not very educated on this topic um, and used her as like the celebrity to this campaign. But then also, if you look in the commercial, she um, hands this police officer a Pepsi and then like everyone's peaceful and happy and everyone's, you know, um, you know, the world's a better place because a Pepsi was handed to a cop. And um, that's obviously not the case. It's obviously not real life. So. The, what Pepsi did is they kind of used their product to say like, oh look, we're like creating peace in the world when really it just was kind of used in a bad way to promote their product. Um, when really that um, their product didn't need to be promoted in this ad at all. They are, uh, 
what, a billion dollar company, there was no reason that they needed to, um, you know, show off a Pepsi can at all, because everyone knows what Pepsi is. Um, whereas the kind movement, if we go back, when you scroll down the page a little more, they have their hashtag and their ads and their grants that they're giving out, and they don't use their kind bar as like um, a driving force to like their advertisements. They really focus on their movement more than the advertisement part of it. So that's why that's the difference between the two. They truly care about the issue, and they're not just trying to sell their product. Um, so I talked about those two companies, and then what we're gonna talk about next is um, kind of individually how you can um, better yourself on social media uh, because um, talked about the business a little bit, but again, it's kind of difficult to separate the business aspect and the um, personal aspect. Um, so um, just a kind of couple questions to consider when you're posting something on social media. Um, how will this affect me? Can this affect my relationship with others? Who will be viewing these comments and this content? Um, is it harmful? Can this affect others? And do I really need to post this comment? And this all sounds pretty straightforward and something that um, I shouldn't have to say, but you'd be surprised um, you know, how many people um, can really hear this. And even me, sometimes I forget some of these things. So um, it's really just helpful to hear this um, kind of being reiterated once in a while. Um, so we talked about the social media aspect of the business. Um, next, we're going to talk about um, the SEO because we talked about um, you know social media and we talked about it on our website. Um, but how can we get the best um, SEO out of this? Because you want people to know the social good that you're doing. You want people to relate to your message and really understand your message. Um, so just basic parts of SEO um, that um, we should all know. Um, Keyword and repetition of that keyword is important. Um, research your competitors. This is also um, another uh, very helpful thing to do. Um, not to research them, to steal their ideas, but to research them and see what they've been doing and the impact they've been creating from what they're doing and um, kind of getting ideas off of that because again you want to do this because you truly care about it not because you want to make money off of it. Um, have your internal links and external links um, kind of out there so people can find you easily and also keep your target audience in mind. Um, like the kind bars, um, they have customers because they have very delicious granola bars, um, and, but they also keep their audience in mind because, you know, that's their whole message. Their bars are named kind bars. So, um, you know, with their message, um, they get a very young audience, and so they're very prominent on social media and the hashtags and all that. Um, so they're very good with that, and um, they follow all of these pretty well. Um, so want to kind of end off with a quote from Dalai Lama. It says, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. Um, I talk about compassion a lot and I think about this quote a lot because compassion is so important in your everyday lives and you'd be surprised how much your life can change if you just think about compassion at least once a day and say, hmm, maybe I'll hold this door open for someone. Um, a couple days ago, I was waiting online at Chick-fil-A and I um, saw this mom come in and she was with her two young kids, a toddler and an infant. She was holding the infant in one hand and she was like trying to wrangle the toddler with the other hand. And the toddler um, was just kind of bouncing around and his shoe fell off. 
and um, I was like, oh, this woman's having a hard time. So I went and I um, tied the kid's shoe, but then I realized that they were on the wrong foot, so then I swapped them. And um, when I did that, she was like, that was the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. Uh, but it's just, you know, realizing that and realizing, you know, other people and what they're going through and how you could really make an impact on someone's day, it can, it can make their life a hundred times easier. Um, so yeah, I'm Abby Pearl, I'm the founder and executive director of Diverse Gaming Coalition, and that's my Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have any questions, I like to make this a little bit shorter because I like to really have an open conversation about this. Um, so if anyone has any questions or wants to talk about mm -hmm. anything, go ahead. Nothing? <laughs> In regards to comments, yes. uh, how do you, where do you draw the line? And um, so I have a community organization mm -hmm. I work with, and sometimes we get a lot of people who have very strong opinions. Um, we have a social media policy that helps us kind of delineate, but uh, how do you address that with? customer base when it comes to an issue of um, they want to say that you're censoring them. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, well, we have a policy in place to allow this kind of communication on our website, on our social media, um, it, in your experience, is there, is there a delicate way to approach that? <laughs> um, that's a really good question. Um, Having a social media policy in place is a very, very good start, and it's probably been very helpful for you. Um, but when that kind of situation happens where someone just kind of doesn't care and wants to um, just say, wow, you're you know, hating on my freedom of speech, um, one, a very, very good thing to do is go back to that social media policy and point out the part where it says, hey, this is the part in our policy. Um, we have rules here. If you can't follow these rules, unfortunately, you're going to have to leave. Um, another good point to put out there is that um, a lot of people like to um, be very um, adamant about their opinions on social media, and they will just go until you agree with them, or vice versa. Um, so really, in that situation, um, it's very good not to um, engage with them, to disagree with them, but engage with them to kind of be on mutual grounds and say, um, hey, you may not agree with my opinion, but we have people that are on this page, on this in this community that um, find this as a safe space and find this as a place to go to when they feel unsafe in other s situations. And this is a it, this is an instance where this can make people feel unsafe. So, unfortunately, you mu you're going to have to leave, or you're going to have to you know take that comment down uh, because that's the most important thing um, at least with my social media is a lot of safe spaces for people um, to talk about anything to vent about anything so when someone comes in that is very malicious like that um, we tend to um, first respond to them but if they keep kind of going just kind of you know, weaning them out and saying, hey, this is not going to fly here because um, you still want to stick to your message and stay true to your company's message. Um, so having people in your social media space be as comfortable as possible is the most important thing. One of the things that we have learned is that uh, pros don't like to be invited to meetings. Yeah. <laughs> so when you say, hey, come back, come to our next meeting at this date time, they don't like, like them to the point where they just stop because they don't want to be yeah, um, that's. and that's the thing people think they have power on social media and online when in reality they would not say that to your face so it's very um, 
it's almost funny how they like to do that, but um, when you kind of hit them at a dead end, that's when they tend to stop and um, just kind of wave away. And um, unfortunately, that will always be on online and on social media. Um, being anonymous online is a huge factor to that, and that will unfortunately never change. Um, but again, showing your compassion online and kind of just killing these trolls with kindness is um, a method I like to use because it confuses them almost. <laughs> Anything else? Still got like 20 minutes. <laughs> Talk about anything. Yeah. Um, I know I came in a little bit late, so I'm sorry if you could uh, already like, open up with this, but how would you define compassion? It's a good question. So, um, compassion. Um, when you Google compassion, um, it actually says that it's um, you know a pity for someone when that's not compassion at all. Compassion's not about feeling bad for someone and then doing something nice in return. Compassion is a trait that's in you and something that um, comes over time. And compassion is about doing something because you want to do it and doing something because you genuinely care about it. Um, and that's where a lot of people get confused today. Um, you know, they want to do something nice because then they could post it on Facebook and Twitter and show everyone that they're doing something nice. But in reality, compassion is a trait and it's not just something that you can do and it's not something that you can happen overnight. It's something that's embedded in you and something that everyone has learned or will learn in their lifetime. You're welcome. How do you teach that? How do you teach that? <laughs> um, for starters, doing things like these, um, it's a good start. Um, and just, you know, kind of being a champion of compassion yourself because people like to imitate people that they look up to and if you are compassionate that's a big thing and um, when you are compassionate um, and you know say you're a teacher and um, I'm a student um, and I see my teacher is so compassionate she's so sweet so kind and she just cares about everyone um, that makes me want to model that behavior. So just being like a role model for someone is a very good start. And just also kind of reiterating the fact that compassion is a thing because people forget about that a lot. Because, um, you know, people have bad days. People um, just want to blame other people for their issues. Um, but when you kind of get them to cool down and kind of think about, you know, why was it such a bad day? Oh, maybe you're right, maybe it wasn't such a bad day. And then they kind of, you know, get that a little bit of a spark of compassion going and they say, oh, well, yeah, I guess it wasn't a bad day. And then, you know, so just kind of being that model for someone is very, very important because we unfortunately don't have a lot of that anymore, uh, but it's still very important. Anybody else? How do you suggest responding to bad comments? <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, so um, I am more often getting flooded with bad comments and good comments because of the work that I do and um, being in online spaces and gaming spaces it happens very very often so um, when this does happen again kind of killing them with kindness is uh, a method I like to use and there's a lot of different methods but personally that's the method that I like to use because it gets them kind of confused and you know why is she being nice to me if you know I'm saying all these bad things, um, but doing that I've found has kind of weaned them away from you know saying things or even commenting back. Um, 
also sometimes it gets to a point, especially in my work, that I just have to delete the comments uh, entirely. Um, I don't suggest that in every instance because like, if you have someone saying like, oh, you suck, like you're not gonna delete that. They have the right to their opinion. Uh, but if someone's saying like, really bad things like they're being racist or homophobic or anything along those lines or if they're even just making anyone uncomfortable and unsafe um, that's a kind of indication that you probably should delete the comment now when that happens sometimes they'll comment back and say oh you deleted my comment you don't want to talk about x y and z and that's not the case at all just keep ignoring it keep getting rid of it because that's not something that should be on any profile at all. Any Anybody else? Well, if no one has any questions, um, I mean, I still have 14 minutes. Uh, so if anyone, you know, wanted to talk to me personally, or you guys wanted to talk to each other about what we just talked about, uh, feel free to do so. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs>